The family is the basic unit of our society, the group that works together, plays together, suffers and triumphs together. In good times and bad, we can always count on family unity. But there is a problem facing this family. It is an unprecedented problem, never faced by American families before. It is a problem which calls for application of family unity, discipline, preparation, and possibly sacrifice. It is the threat of nuclear warfare. The awesome proportions of modern warfare stagger the imagination. Weapons with millions of tons of explosive power can be delivered on our homes by supersonic planes and soon by intercontinental missiles. Faced with this massive threat, our nation is reacting as it has always reacted to danger by diligently preparing new defenses. One of the principal means of protecting us is by civil defense and defense mobilization. This is a major responsibility of your federal, state, and local governments, which have detailed plans to meet every phase of a national emergency. The threat to our security is so broad, however, that official preparations of our governments are not enough. The responsibility for survival must be shared by every citizen and every family. This is because civil defense planning from the federal level to the family depends for its success on similar planning at every other level. The problem is one of national survival, and the only answer is a strong network of civil defense preparations across the entire nation. An attack upon our nation may destroy many targets and cause much damage. But if all of us have cooperated in building this network of civil defense, we can be assured that our nation will survive. We hear much talk about secret weapons. Civil defense officials have a secret weapon of their own. It is capable of mobilizing over 40 million American families into an effective civil defense. Whether she is the breadwinner or the manager of a household or both, the American woman is the key to family action. The entire family looks to her for leadership in the home. We women are the last to underrate man power, but the country is only beginning to discover the potential it has in woman power. 51% of our nation's adults are women and one-third of our workforce. Women are far more active in civic and political affairs today than ever before. It is only natural, therefore, that civil defense officials turn to the same reservoir of strength to help them mobilize our home defenses. They know the women will respond as did their pioneer ancestors. While the threat confronting us today is more complex, our course of action is still the same. We must once again make our homes into fortresses against attack. The National Civil Defense and Defense Mobilization Plan contains a comprehensive section on individual action. Civil defense officials are counting on you as good homemakers to see that your home is prepared. Much of your preparation must be directed at withstanding the effects of radioactive fallout created by nuclear explosions. Fallout is tiny radioactive particles of dust which can make you seriously ill or even kill you. Fallout will be a grave threat in a nuclear war, but you and your family can protect yourselves effectively if you do a few simple things. The most important is to build an adequate fallout shelter. You should have on hand at all times enough food, water, and other essentials to maintain your family for two weeks without any outside assistance. Venturing out of your shelter in a high fallout concentration could be fatal. 
While your greatest need will be food and water, you will also need cooking and heating equipment, extra clothing and bedding, first aid and sanitary supplies. This is very important. A battery-powered transistor radio for dependable contact with the outside world. Your morale and your safety may depend upon authoritative information from government officials. All of these items stored in your shelter will enable your family to survive in comparative comfort a two-week period of isolation caused by enemy attack or even natural disaster. You should also have a plan for moving as many of these things as possible to your car. If you must evacuate the area, you will want to take food and water, clothing and first aid supplies with you. The ability of every family to care for itself for two weeks will be the key to our national survival in an attack. At the end of that time, local governments are expected to be operating on an emergency basis. Within four weeks, the federal government will be able to provide help from its vast stockpiles, but it is expecting you and your family to get through the first two weeks on your own. Another important thing you must do is learn the warning signals. Our nation has a warning system which guards every approach to this continent. It can alert us to attack in a matter of minutes. Your first warning probably will come by radio, television, or local warning device. You must be prepared to know what the warning signals mean and what you should do when you hear them. The alert signal is a steady blast of three to five minutes, like this. When you hear the alert signal, an attack is probable. You should take action as directed by your local government. Tune your radio to a Conelrad frequency and proceed according to your community's emergency action plan. Do not, under any circumstances, use the telephone. The second signal is the take cover signal a three-minute warbling tone or series of short blasts like this. These sounds mean attack imminent. Take cover immediately in the best available shelter. If you are in a building that has no prepared shelter, go to the basement or to an interior first floor room and lie face down on the floor. If you are outdoors or in a car, go to the nearest shelter. If you cannot reach a shelter, lie face down on the ground in a ditch if possible or open the windows of your car and crouch on the floor. Your reaction to these signals must be instantaneous. Delay could be fatal. So know them well. Alert, take action as directed, and the warbling tone. Or a series of short blasts. which mean take cover. Seek the best available shelter immediately. 
The next thing you must understand is Conelrad. It is the nation's emergency system of broadcasting, the means by which you most likely will receive information and instructions in a national emergency. Your Conelrad stations are at 640 and 1240 on your standard AM radio dial. Newer radios have them clearly marked. Keep tuned to one or the other, 640 or 1240, in the event of attack. Messages will be intermittent, so do not change your dial. If there is sufficient warning, Conelrad will broadcast pre-attack instructions on where to go and what to do. After an attack, it will broadcast evacuation instructions and other important information. It will give you information on fallout, where and when it is expected, and when it is safe to move around. It will broadcast survival news and messages from the President and other leaders. Because Conelrad is designed to keep enemy planes from locating their targets by radio beams, it is not as strong as day-to-day -day broadcasting. You will not receive Conelrad broadcasts as clearly as you do your daily programs. It is constantly being improved by skilled technicians, but at present reception varies from good in cities to very limited in rural areas. Conelrad tests are held periodically so you can see whether your radios pick them up. If they will not, you and your family should follow instructions you have already received from your civil defense officials. It takes a short time for stations to switch from normal broadcasting to Conelrad, so don't be alarmed if you think you should be hearing Conelrad and you aren't. The stations are changing over and the broadcasts will start in a few moments. Above all, Remember the Conelrad frequency, 640 or 1240 on your standard AM radio dial for official information and instructions. Another thing you must know is your community's emergency action plan. Your officials either have one or are working on one. You should know what role you and your family play. Your community's plan may call for evacuation. This decision must be made by your local officials after carefully weighing all of the factors. If there is an evacuation plan, be thoroughly familiar with it so that your family will know what to do. Your family automobile is your most effective means of movement. Be sure it is equipped with the necessary survival items and in good working order at all times. Keep the fuel tank at least half full and the battery charged. The car radio will give you access to Conelrad broadcasts, and with vents and windows closed, the car offers some protection against fallout while you are driving to a shelter area. This little wallet-sized card is a good reminder of the things which you must do and learn. In a few simple words, it tells how each of us can be prepared for a civil defense emergency. Carry it with you. There is no better time to start being prepared than now. Ask your civil defense officials for a supply of these cards and see that each member of your family carries one with him. It will be a guide and a reminder to do these things. Learn your warning signals. Attack alert and attack take cover. You must be able to recognize them and know what to do when you hear them. They call for immediate and instinctive action. Learn how to use Conelrad, the emergency system of broadcasting by which you will receive official information and instructions. Remember the Conelrad frequencies, 640 or 1240, on your standard AM radio dial. Keep tuned to one or the other. Know your community's emergency action plan and your role in it. Your civil defense officials 
will be glad to help you work out your plans in accordance with theirs. Build a shelter which will protect your family from radioactive fallout. Stock it with food and water and other supplies which will sustain your family for two weeks. By that time, you should receive outside help. Learn the other protective measures against fallout. You must know how to find the most protection if you can't get to a shelter. You must know how to decontaminate yourself if you have been exposed to fallout. Learn first aid and home emergency preparations, such as firefighting and home rescue techniques. The help of trained specialists will not be available in an emergency. We will have to be prepared to protect our own homes and our loved ones. These are all simple preparations. Many are just good housekeeping techniques applied under emergency conditions. With a little study and a little practice, every member of the family will use them instinctively in an emergency. As your family participates in many activities as a group, so it must participate as an efficient group in the vitally important activity of personal and national survival. Planning and preparations not only will make your home a fortress, it will add to your community's preparedness, to state and federal preparedness. It will help make our nation so formidable that no enemy will dare attack us.